Turning pro is a mindset. If we are struggling with fear, self-sabotage, procrastination, self-doubt, etc., the problem is we're thinking like amateurs. Amateurs don't show up. Amateurs let diversity, not diversity, adversity defeat them just like that. I didn't let pronouncing it wrong defeat me. <laughs> the pro thinks differently. He shows up. She does her work. He keeps on trucking no matter what. And that is by Stephen Pressfield. And I love Stephen Pressfield, but I'm sure I'm going to love my guest even more today. My guest is Joel Dunn, and he is from Down Under. That's my one time. I'll try not to, Joel, do, <laughs> do more accents. Maybe I'll talk like a Kiwi and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, fashion chops, right? That's New Zealand. I it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So before I get started, just a reminder, you can find this on YouTube, or if you're on YouTube, you can find it on all the podcast places. So I found Joel when I was on a New Year's episode of Photo Biz X, which is a great podcast. Andrew Helmich invited 10 coaches to submit our predictions for 2023. I was privileged to be one of the guests and I heard Joel's brilliance and asked him to be on my show and lucky us, he said yes. So welcome, Joel. Thanks for being on my show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, that was a great podcast. Um, and it's really, it was amazing to get the 10 different takes from 10 different coaches on what 2023 is going to hold. So I, I really enjoyed it as well. I'm listening to yours as well. Thank you. Thank you. So I know a little bit of his bio, which is really part of his job description, which is besides being a photographer, he helps ambitious photographers build highly profitable businesses, which uh, we both love that word. The show is called The Highly Profitable Photographer. And he helps people create a sales and marketing machine and more important, rewiring their subconscious programming. So I would love to know just in a in a short <clears throat> share where you came from. What's your background? I, I don't need to know when you bought your first camera, but how did you get into photography? How did you learn mindset? So go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I always loved photography as a kid, and then I just transitioned into going to university with photography, and then oh, wow. um, from there, yeah, I did a degree, and then I came out and worked for a studio, Star Shots, which was a glamour studio in, in Australia, in Melbourne, for a year, and then decided to go out on my own as a 20, just 22, I think, when I started my business, so I had no idea what I was doing. I fumbled through it, but just fell into weddings, so I did weddings for hmm. A long time until I decided I want to transition to portrait studio. And that's what we did for the majority of the 20, 21 years I had the business. I just finished up that business last year. And as I was doing that, particularly towards the end, I was really getting deep into the what I found the biggest difference of my success was it wasn't getting better at sales or marketing. And it was more myself and my mindset and how I showed up in the business mm. and how the habits and structures I created in the business. So I then had a lot of photographers and friends reaching out and asking me for advice or how did you do this and how do you manage that? And that sort of was where the coaching slowly crept in and I decided to do a coaching course just to learn a bit. And I was just going to do it as a side hustle. I was going, yeah, I'll do a little bit of coaching on the side. Um, but the more I did, the more I loved. And then, you know, Fast forward five years, it was last year, I was like 90% doing coaching and I worked about five hours in my photography business um, and I had two part-time staff who ran it. And then I just decided I just wanted to go and just do this and concentrate on coaching. And um, I love it because I went through a lot of stress, anxiety, really hard times in my business. And what I love about coaching is I can fast track that for other photographers mm -hmm. and make sure they don't have to go and through the same thing and make the same mistakes I did. And I can help them achieve a really powerful, profitable business relatively quickly. 
I'm loving that as well. I was a photographer, Joel, for 30-ish years, and I've always been that mentor personality. If I learn something, I want to share it. And then it became clear that I didn't want to grow my studio. It was time for me to officially give back. And I love watching people blossom. It it feels like it's, I don't know if you agree with this, but, or have this experience, but when someone is successful, it feels like it's happened to me. That I, I just get so jazzed. Are you- yeah, I agree. Like when I get feedback from clients or they send me a text about what something amazing that's happened, whether it's a past client or one that's doing the program at the time, it's the best feeling. Yeah. yeah. Like you're just so pumped for them. It's like, I've got kids. It's like when they achieve something, it's, you know, you feel so excited for them and mm-hmm. yeah, because you know that feeling like when you get your first amazing sale or you, you know, get one of your goals, achieve one of your goals. I know how it feels for me. So it's great to live through the other, my clients. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of my biggest thrills recently is a couple of my clients had been very successful shoot and burn photographers, working a lot, a lot, a lot, making some money but burning out and also not doing the the service of helping people select and printing. And for both of them, we spent a lot of time in our coaching on the mindset issue because I knew they could attract people. I knew their work was beautiful. And I could tell once they s- used a sales system, they could just you know, rock their world. But the hardest thing for both, it it happened to be almost the same time, was getting over those fears and doubts and the the fear that someone won't be happy or that they'll lose clients they love. So um, yeah, so yeah, that's my Australian too. (laughs) How'd I do? (laughs) Yeah, I think I get a lot of a lot of clients that come from the shoot and burn model and we transition them into our in-person sales and it's you it's very much a money block usually about what they can charge what people will be able to afford or what they'll actually spend and it's you're right the mindset behind that once you get that obviously you've got to put the processes is different but i think with the shoot and burn model it's it's got a limited shelf life because you can only charge a certain amount for shooting burn you have to do a lot of shoots to gain the money you need to so i believe you know less is more less clients for a better quality experience for them Mm -hmm. and it's just an energy exchange money so the more value you give someone the more they're going to give you in money terms Mm, i like that i'm going to repeat that wait it's a it's an energy energy. exchange so the more value you give someone the more value that like they'll put on it, the more money they'll spend. Right, right. So when we choose to have phone calls, which I find, you know, that right there is a barrier and then planning and then, you know, photographing and and then doing sales and producing for them, then it's a natural consequence that they'll be, willing to invest more and we need less clients. So we don't need anyone with a pulse. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then when you get to that level, I think it's understanding that everyone's your client as well. Like not everyone wants to spend two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, but that's okay. You don't need everyone. You need a select portion of people. We shoot and burn. You almost, you're talking to a lot more people like, but when you do it, you only need to be talking to your people and you'll get the right people through the door when you start on social media and your marketing and different things, um, speaking your truth and stepping into your personality and that will attract them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my clients <clears throat> recently said, well, yes, this last couple of months has been slower, but I have more money in savings than I've had all the year before because I was dependent on that constant flow, whereas I've had three clients and I have $8,000 in the bank. And, you know, that's, uh, it's worth all the fear of change (laughs) and fear of rejection 
and and such. So, okay, I would love for you, first of all, to define oh, the word mindset. Oh, good question. And I think it's it's something that's very blase mindset, like it gets thrown around a lot. Mm-hmm. For me, for me, mindset, I heard a quote recently and I loved it. It's like life is the pursuit of the ideal version of yourself. For me, mindset is just how you show up in the world, what's going on inside your mind at any given time. And what I try to do and I've done myself and with my clients is give them tools to slowly shift how you show up day to day. And what I mean by that is gratitude's a tool, like a gratitude practice is a tool. Meditation is a tool. And so the gratitude practice, when you consistently do it, you start to become and show up more grateful, more positive as a mindset. When you do meditation, you start to show up more present through the day. So when you use a tool, you don't want to just use it. If you just meditate and you go, oh, I've meditated, done, and you go back to your normal life, it's not going to do much. But it's a tool to slowly change your brain, your chemistry, your neural chemistry in your brain to show up differently. So mindset's just changing what's going on in here and shifting it to, to serve you better. So what kind of mindset changes do <clears throat> high percentage of photographers need to change that are either at the beginning stage or they're feeling kind of stuck? Do you have some uh, areas yeah. of shift? 100%. Like I think one of them is definitely becoming pre- more present because we spend so much of our time in fear and stress and anxiety, which is future or past-based. So always looking into that, like, I haven't got bookings of this and, you know, where is my money coming from? And you're looking. So with that, it's a money mindset. So usually we're not worried about the money we have right now. It's the money we think we're going to have in a week, in a month, in a year Mm. that stresses us out. So we do a lot of work on stepping outside our comfort zone, pushing our limiting beliefs we have around ourselves and money and how to shift those things. Because until you are comfortable being uncomfortable, and like it might be for a client, it might be getting on the phone and actually talking to clients instead of emailing. That's a might be a big jump for them. Mm-hmm. So we work through that mindset of what's blocking them there. And when you make these big leaps, and it, then it might be go shoot and burn to in-person sales or hiring a staff member or getting a coach is a big barrier for a lot of people because of the yes. cost. Right? But it's like these, when you make those big leaps of faith and step through your fear, that's where you get those dramatic shifts in earning and uh, profitability in your studio mm-hmm. so yeah. do you have an example of someone where you saw um, a mindset that like when they clicked it how things changed yes uh let me think of one uh, there's a, one of my yes i've got a client who so what we do one of the things one of the marketing strategies i do with clients is third-party marketing on Facebook. So the whole premise of it is, you know, you can market and do ads for your brand on your page, but it, you want to reach out to new audiences. So one of the things we do is find a different business in that same area that you can team up with and you can post on their page and do a giveaway on their page. Ooh. So this, uh, yeah, it's re- works really well. This uh, particular photographer was so scared of approaching people. So she was very shy um, she had a lot of negative thought patterns going on about what would happen if she approached another business. And so it took a long time to get her up to a stage where she could do it. Now she physically threw up before she did this, but she, <laughs> she, that's how scared she was, mm-hmm. but she approached the. Oops. Go ahead. You, you oh, jammed up. You there? Can you hear me? Okay, we had a little jam up, but we're going now. So, uh, so she, yeah, she approached the other business. Yes. Um, and he, he it was a uh, he, it was a butcher butcher shop, and he said yes. Interesting. And they did they did the promotion, and she got like I can't remember exactly. Let's say a hundred leads. So she got a lot of leads, like 100, 120 leads, and she created a lot of income from that one thing. Now, her pushing through that fear barrier, which was really was real for her and right really hard showed her what happens on the back end of pushing through your fear. And when she actually did it, she said it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like he was lovely. He said, yes, because we make all this stuff up in our mind of how difficult it's going to be. And they're going to say no, and they're going to laugh at me. And 
whatnot. But when she actually pushed through that fear barrier, then the next time she went to approach someone, it was much easier Mm -hmm. and much easier again. And then that created a marketing strategy she could replicate with other people just by pushing. And it took a lot of work to push her to the level where she could do that. But it was, I think we get so scared of fear and fear is a bad thing. Mm. But I look at fear as a really powerful thing in business because it means you're pushing up against your limits and when we step over that line that's where beautiful things happen in life and in Mm. in business yeah i i love that i i read dune when i was in my 20s have you have you read Dune? i haven't read it i know what you're talking about the book so all through the whole series the basically mantra is fear is the mind killer And he's trying to learn how to be kind of like a Jedi, but uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, But basically mastering and learning to not let the fear stop us. So I love what you said on that. And also love the staying in the present. Um, When I went through a divorce, and he was already living with the cashier from the grocery store around the corner when I thought we were just uh, getting space and <laughs> separated. And when I was in pain, it was because I was either thinking about the past or the future and and them together and all that. And I realized when I got present, when I pulled myself Like right here, right now, I can feel this chair. I can look at you. Uh, There's a car going by. Oh, those flowers are pretty. No fear, no pain. So that that was a training for me that I used to not only uh, mine the gold of a breakup and get past it, but to strengthen me for all aspects of my life. Yeah. And that's what I love about being an entrepreneur is those things will come up in our face that we're not as strong about and our strengths will come up and all of it for growth, all of it, not only to be more successful in business, but I'm wondering if you find this too, that it also like life becomes better. Our skills are just daily inner, inner world changes do you have thoughts on that i do and it, like whatever's going on in your social life or your personal life maps out in your business and vice versa when you're a small business owner it's very intertwined so we we talk a lot about that like a lot of the things we do in mindset is not just for business it maps out in your relationships become better you know you're happier you're more joyful you show up better in life so it's Anytime you feel fear, stress, anxiety, pain, I always tell my clients, what's going on? Stop yourself and where's your thoughts at that time? Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's usually in the future or it's it's in the past. And go, well, that's interesting. Like, why am I jumping to that? And just come back. Whether you concentrate on your breath or what's right in front of you or get present and then it clears that out as well. And then then the, the best thing you can do is take action on something that's bothering you. Mm. So if you're finding your thoughts are going to the future about having no leads or no clients, come back to the present. Okay, what can I do about that right now? And then move into action on that. Mm. Yeah. So I love that. Um, even if it's a little, like I'm thinking about someone that uh, you're going extreme, but someone that's agoraphobic that never leaves the house. And I heard a conversation with a woman and her therapist that the the first thing he had her do is just step out the front door and go no further. And then from that point, things kept unfolding. So in our world, it might be make a phone call to a friend and pretend it's a client uh, or... I don't know. Is there some first step? Yeah, you're right. It, it, yeah, it's about breaking stuff down into manageable pieces. Yeah, like mm. the first, when, like for example, when clients are scared of getting on the phone, like my clients are scared of getting on the phone to 
their clients, it's like, all right, practice the script to your husband or wife. Okay, now ring a friend and do the script on, you know, the, the call with a friend. And then the next step would go, okay, we'll find a past client or someone you already know and practice on them and you're slowly building up and then rip the bandaid off and just do it. And a lot of the time it's just don't have any expectations about it. Just have fun with it. Mm. Don't, don't put any pressure on it. It's just you're just having fun. You're just having a conversation with another human being. And most of the time it's interesting. It's like these people want us to call them, but they're interested in our services. It's just finding out what they'd like and see if they are a good fit or not. That's all that's happening. Right, right. Yeah. Um. So is there something in your life that was a big breakthrough um with a mindset that you'd care to share with us good question really good question i'm fine um, today <laughs> i think i would say yeah probably a, the biggest one was what people would spend so i got to a point in my photography where i was doing about a 1300 dollars average sale i had a package for about 1300 and at that time i thought and I hear this from my clients all the time, so it makes me laugh. It's like, well, in my area, my clients mm-hmm. won't spend more than this. And I thought mm-hmm. that was the ceiling, right? I thought mm-hmm. I'd hit the ceiling, that's it. So my mind was like, well, if I want more money, I just need to get more shoots because that's, that's as much as I'm going to get. So I hired a coach around that time and we changed the price list and the process. And not a lot, but we nearly doubled our average sale relatively quickly and probably in, in the next six to 12 months our average sale doubled and that was a massive shift for me because i thought that was the the limit and then we doubled that in in a period of time so what was the precise mindset shift or how did you it was that? not yeah it was me preconceiving what people could afford and going, Mm. well, that's their limit. I can't charge that because they haven't got the money. Instead, it was putting different options out there and allowing people to buy and Mm. not putting my limits on it and my thoughts. And it was really scary when we first started doing this because it's like our lowest price jumped dramatically, for example. Oh, well, what if people can't afford that? And I was, at the time, I was sort of the mindset, like I need to have something for everyone. I need to have something that everyone can afford but you don't because you don't have to be for everyone, right? right? Like McDonald's covers 95% of the population probably where there's a, you know, $500 plate restaurants are only for the top, you know, maybe 10% of people that can afford to eat there, but that's, they all got their place. You mm-hmm. don't have to be for everyone. So we changed the, I think the biggest thing was the mindset for me, like I don't have to be for everyone. Like this is for people that want a particular, they want, everything done for them they want beautiful quality they want a great experience they're prepared to pay for it so i'm trying to like dig dig deeper about how you change that mindset what was the action or the thought did you have affirmations did you like what yeah got it It to happen first it was i think a lot of trust i always say this it's like when i coach clients is trust yourself first trust the process but how did you get to trust it's a leap of faith to be honest yeah it's a it's like when you have a coach for example they know they've done it before right so you have to trust what they're telling you and you've put their faith in them so if people come to you they trust that you're going to guide them in the right direction so Mm -hmm. with my coach i had at the time they said this is what you need to do and this is what you should be charging we talked through it and i had to trust that Right. Okay. Right. That's why I'm paying them. Trust that I could pull it off and then trust the universe that this is the right step for me. That was the big one. Right. And then it's really just getting over your fear. Yes. Affirmations. Um, you know, I'd had quotes I'd read to, to pump myself up, for example, or uh, that inspired me. Um, that's around the time I started doing meditation and mm. uh, um, gratitude and those sort of things. And a lot of the time, you, the, why, why I talk about faith and trust is because until you have that first sale or that first person that comes through the process and it actually works, you're just going on faith and trust because right. you haven't seen it happen, right? Once you get that first reward or that first result, then it becomes much easier. Go, wow, okay, this this could work. 
and then it, your confidence rises to the you know and then you keep doing it and then it just becomes natural it just becomes easy at, at a stage right so right. It, i think that if you're looking for a key moment it's just having the the guts or the yeah. confidence to do it just do it what's the like the worst thing that can happen is they don't buy or they don't book or you know then that's that's just one client so so what i'm hearing is that you based on the trust you had in your coach and then a decision that you made a decision that in spite of your doubts you took action yeah I and then that action gave you feedback that was like oh okay i can try this again am i tracking that right yes correct and i think the other thing that was in my mind at the time is like well, if I keep doing this same thing, I'm going to keep getting the same results. Mm. And I think understanding and knowing that I knew there was photographers doing better than me or getting a better average or, and my coach had past clients that had got these results. So for me, it's like, okay, if someone's done it before, it's achievable, right? Right. So that's a big one for me. If I know someone's doing something, I go, well, they're just a photographer like me. If they can do it, why can't I do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> um, how do you d- address the lack of feeling worthy? That, mm. Sure, I can do this, but I don't really deserve it. I'm not good enough. My work's not good enough. Or uh, even deeper, like our money mindset about, about our relationship to money and 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 what the person that we are that like we're we're the kind of person that doesn't earn a lot of money or you know what i'm saying so i do that's a big one and that what we usually do there is it's always comes from a limiting belief or and most of the time it's from something in your childhood or younger days that you were told you know like mm-hmm. i've had clients that in their family, money was sort of evil, like, and rich people were assholes and like this happened, this. So they had this money mindset that like, I can't be rich because it means I won't be loved by my family because they don't like money. They don't like people with money Mm -hmm. or, you know, other people, they were told how useless they were like as kids or, you know, maybe it's their first job or they had some experience that they didn't feel worthy. So we do touch on looking and sort of peeling back the layers and going back into what's the root cause of this, you know, deservability, right? Right. And we, we, the way we, just to give you a quick, you know, obviously it's a, it's a big topic, but one of the things we do is like with this is I am statements, right? So whatever you put mm. after I am, that's sort of what you were showing up as like most people, a lot of my clients, I'm not good enough or I'm not good enough photographer. I'm not a good enough at marketing and, whatever you're saying to yourself is actually going to be true because that maps Mm -hmm. out in the reality. So we shift that. And the way we do that is I get them to sit down and write out their ideal life. Like if anything was possible, what would that look like? Like what's your business doing? What are you driving? Where are you living? Who are you living with? Where are you going on holiday? Everything. And then you read that and go, okay, what's that version of you? I am what? What is that person? Mm. powerful they're energetic they're successful they're Creative. abundant whatever whatever comes up Ages. and we yeah and we write out five or six of those and then we read those out mm. and as part of the morning ritual every day it's because you have to show up now to get results later right so you have to start embodying that person what we tend to do is go when i've got that i'll be happy i'll be successful i'll be everything but what you have to do is bring it to now and go i need to show up as happy successful confident now to get that future reality so that's the part of the shift that we do Mm. as well yeah to Um, rewire it like because with habits like that if you do something every day you're starting to rewire what's happening in here right right that reminds me of um a life-changing book for me and many others called you can heal your life by louise hay are you familiar I know Louise Louise Hay, yeah. I haven't heard of that book. So that was her first book. And um, she wrote it. She was one of the first people during the AIDS crisis that 
just started loving the people in San Francisco. I think it was San Francisco that were sick and the whole community. And she started giving lectures and it, it basically mindset. And in the book, one of the exercises is to look in the mirror and say those affirmations. And I remember how hard it was for me decades ago to be, you know, I'm beautiful. I'm smart. I'm powerful. Everyone loves me. And now it's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, you are. But um, unless somehow we got that message early on, if we got mixed messages or we weren't believing that people thought that, then, like you said, building, building those new synapses in our brains and starting to realize that I'm so powerful. Thank you for the reminder of that. You know, yeah, and a lot of time we have, you know, self-sabotage or things that are happening or beliefs we have, we don't know where they've come from. So until we unpack it a little and you can see it's come from this moment or this happened in my family or this is how my dad talked to me or there's a lot of different things that can happen, that that still holds true. It might have happened to you as an eight-year-old, eight but that eight-year-old's still showing up as a 40 or 50 or 60-year-old mm -hmm. with a sick make so it's almost healing that or understanding that a little bit to shift it and right. it's not like oh it's just gone it's almost like no. you're taking layers off it right and it's mm -hmm. like you're taking layer after layer off and getting better and better at showing up differently right right oh i had two thoughts in the middle of that but then i got <laughs> so engaged in what you were saying um one of the things that i like to help people uh separate is their product from their worth. Uh, I've As artists, and especially when we're kids, we take our precious creations and say, here, what do you think? And I feel like people often, when they're, you know, afraid to charge well, or if, I think some of the reason people do a shoot and share is because they're afraid to actually be with a client and see their reaction because they're afraid they're not going to love it. And yeah. it's actually the opposite because we're showing them pictures of people they love. So if we do even an okay job, our clients are going to enjoy it. But seeing our work as a product rather than something that is our heart and our soul and, and, and uh, assigns value, like let's say, Everyone hates it. It doesn't have anything to do with our lovability or our value in the world. Um, it's a product and we've got a client or we're looking for a client that likes our product and will give us money for it. Um, thoughts on that? I totally agree. Yeah. And a lot of, as artists, we wrap our self-worth up in our work a lot. And mm -hmm. I certainly get at the start, but like you said, when you start to seeing it, it's just a product and, it's so interesting for me. Like, like you said, you don't have to be an amazing photographer. You just have to be good. Like I've seen brilliant photographers go broke because they just oh. don't understand. And and yeah. average photographers make so much money. So it's not about the photography. So it's about for me, be good, be a good photographer for sure. Like you want to show up as a good photographer, but it's about the customer experience because the better the customer experience, the more, the less the photos matter. It's more what you, the feeling they have when they look at them because the, they had such a great experience through the process with you and you captured those moments for them with the ones they love. And it's, they're going to buy, like they're going to buy and they're not going to love every photo. But they don't have to, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, let go of your it doesn't mean anything about you. you like you said if they love or hate the photo right usually they're looking at photos and they're looking at them and they love one so it's it's got very little to do with you you just captured it right and when we give of ourselves and create that connection they're less likely to be critical and think that we're not that great yeah <laughs> and in fact I don't know. Have you found this that the less people pay, the often the more critical and the less satisfied they are? 
hundred percent. I always say this, the people who pay the most are the easiest to deal with and love the photos the most because like but when I did weddings as a prime example is like the more they pay, the more they go, Joel, you just do your thing. Mm-hmm. And there's no like what they want. And you get someone on a low package and they'll have a list of things they want. They want you here at this time. They want you to capture this. And then, oh, you missed this shot. And there's so, it's such a pain. I am curious about the psychology of that. What do you think is, I have some theories, but do you have People, a theory? It's the same with coaching, right? And I'm just to give you an example, if I do a webinar, it's free. And I did one yesterday with another coach, another two coaches. There's 370 people register as a free webinar, 150 showed up. So it's usually 40, 50% show up for a free webinar. If it's a paid webinar, it's 95%. Right. right. People pay attention when they pay money. So mm-hmm. they the more value they put on something, which is money, the more they are like, you're an expert, you do your thing, and they value it. People pay less. They don't value it right like if you if you bought a like i've done this before i bought a hundred dollar online course to learn something and it's a video series and then you watch one then you just forget about it. Oh, it's only a hundred bucks but if i paid ten thousand dollars for that same thing i'm going to watch every video probably three times i'm going to write each note i'm going to take action on that because I'll, I'll put more value into it right right yeah so i think yeah with photography the more people pay you the more they're valuing what you're actually doing for them and the more they're going to let you do your thing and love it because you're the expert right um i totally agree with that my other thoughts as i pondered this because if they don't value it why are they extra critical and i've been trying to find somebody to paint my house and it's a wood house so it needs to be scraped off and it uh, there are some issues of the government needs to make sure they handle if it's lead paint anywhere, they handle it right. And I've gotten quotes from $8,000 to $40,000. So if I decided to hire the $8,000, who might be even better than the $40,000, I would doubt his expertise. So I would be watching everything he did, expecting problems expecting him to not do what i want but if i break down and hire the most expensive one i'm going to assume that they're doing it well and perfect so that's one of my little like maybe that's that's the thing is we could do the exact same job um but i'm going to figure it's not as good if i if i buy something for $29 $29 at like Ross Dress for Less. Do you have those in Australia? No, but I know what okay. you're talking about. So yeah. it's a, they get remaindered and, and it'll say originally $239 and now it's 29. Well, if I was in this beautiful boutique and they were helping me and it was the exact same outfit, first of all, I would think it was more well-made and I would treasure it more because that kind of store, I'm not every store, but I'm picturing the one where there is a salesperson that finds out what I'm looking for, what the occasion is, goes and finds things and says, this would be beautiful on you, your coloring, your body type, um, what kind of fabrics do you like? I'm going to treasure that more. I'm going to think it's better. And if I found it in this pile and stacks of things and, and this crowded, dirty dressing room and noise and hard, you know, just linoleum floors and things and same product. So yeah. I had that like an interesting one was I had a client um, who does uh, corporate headshots and branding and whatnot. She's an amazing photographer. And when we started, I'm like, you're way too cheap. We're trying to work on our prices. And she was worried about putting prices up and sometimes i think you know there's signs from the universe you're on the right track and she had a client she put a quote out for and didn't get the job and she ended up running into her and she sort of talking she gave the client and i said look i loved your work more than anyone else i i went but i went for someone else and purely because you were too cheap and she goes i wasn't confident at that price you could get what i wanted something was off like for the quality of your work and the price. And that was the wake up call. She was like, yeah. 
And the lady ended up spending three times what she was charging. So if she had that price three times higher, she would have got the job, which is really right. interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm also thinking you might have some tips, but um, over the years I've found that when I was going to make a next leap, I had to do activities to allow myself to receive. And many years ago, when I was still doing weddings, I photographed uh, family portraits for a woman who already had had me do her daughter's wedding and spent a ton and never asked for any discount or anything, just it's that much great. Then I did a corporate event for her husband's business. And again, full price, everything. And so we, I did the session and I did the sale and it was a, I knew it was going to be a big one and that I didn't need to give her the bottom line that day. I knew, you know, normally I'm like, get the money, <laughs> but I knew that wasn't a problem. I totaled it up. And it was $20,000 and the highest sale I'd ever had, I think at that point was about nine. And I knew I could not call her up and tell her that until I was ready to receive it. And so I practiced, Hey, Lane, how are you? What's going on? Okay. I did the totals and it's 20. Hey, you know, it's over and over again. I wrote it out. So finally, you know, the day I called her up and I said the thing and she's like, oh, okay. Do you want a half now or do you want the whole thing? And I said, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Why don't I send you half? Cool. And then she said, I'm so excited because I was so tempted to take off 25%. I, so she said, I'm so excited. I'm going on a trip to the East coast. And first I'm going to meet with an art dealer and buy a painting from Picasso's daughter. Then I'm going to, we'll just say Versace, and he's going to design a gown for me for, for this gala. How would I have felt if I had taken off 25%? And oh, it was such a huge, huge lesson for me. To Yeah, and I think you did a I think it was you're aware of you needed to you know create that confidence when you talk to the talk to her and and you know know your worth as well. But the interesting thing when you talked about that is like I always say, if you're at fifty thousand dollars and you want a five hundred thousand dollar business, if you gave that five hundred thousand dollar business to someone at a fifty thousand dollar level, they would just implode, right? Because they haven't got the level of mindset and confidence and to hold the space for that money yet. Mm -hmm. You have to build it up. And what I mean by that is doing affirmations, doing mindset work, building up what you can hold as a person. And well, that's why so many lottery winners go broke within, you know, I think there's some stat like 90% of people who win the lottery go bankrupt because they all of a sudden they've got this money, but they, they're not, they, haven't, they can't hold that money, right? They haven't right. got the mindset to hold that money. So it leaks out. It's the same in business. You have to mm -hmm. build your mindset up to hold a higher level of mm -hmm. of money and success mm -hmm. and it's doing the work doing affirmations meditating working on your limiting beliefs stepping outside your comfort zone over and over mm -hmm. they're building a muscle for you to hold a higher level right and yes mm -hmm. i early on i remember uh that breaking the th wanting to break the thousand dollar or the under thousand dollar and so i started meditate and I started picturing uh people coming in the studio and writing me checks I wrote out some checks uh you know dummy checks and I had people hand them to me for like three four thousand dollars and give me this great big hug I visualized like raining money just to get that energy getting that vibration expanding mm. when yeah when I decided to do a podcast, I physically felt the barrier of expansion. And you and I had talked about Jesh Durox. Yeah. And I did his workshop. And when he did a one-on-one, -on -one, about a half hour session, and he's this, if people don't know him, 
he's like spiritual, creative, Pied Piper, really one of a kind person. So he kind of sometimes will channel uh, truth. And he said, Lucy, you're going to be doing what I'm doing. Because at the time I wasn't coaching and you're going to do it worldwide. There's some barrier you need to go over, which I figured out what that was. And then it's all come going to come to you. So when I decided to do this, I almost felt a shell around me and I had to energetically, vibrationally meditate when all the things that Joel, I know, you know what I'm talking about to imagine expanding worldwide. And um, yeah, I love, I didn't know you were like all into the woo woo like I am. So I love this conversation love <laughs> with you. Yeah. It, it, I think, it's, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's interesting you say that because I think every time I've taken a big leap up in my business, it's always come after a big struggle internally or mentally as well. Like it's almost mm -hmm. like, you're you're shedding a shell like you sort of talked about you're shedding something to create a new version of yourself and it's happened a couple of times where it's been maybe a period of a week to a month of really internal hard work and going through some stuff and then you come out the other side and it's just like you've expanded and you've got so much more space to hold what's coming for you as well so I think sometimes people feel they're going backwards and like why am I feeling like this so no it's getting you ready for the next level right yeah. right like working out at a gym, you know, yeah. if you want to lift, I don't know, a hundred pounds and you can't even lift five, you're going to build up to it. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I love it. What I, this is great. I am bummed that you live so far away because I want to hang out with you. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping to come to America later in the year, potentially with um, doing a couple of speaking things. But if I'm around your area, I'll definitely uh, Good. let you know. <laughs> well, come speak in San Diego. If you're yeah. doing that, San Diego is the best city in America. So <laughs> Not a lot biased. of people think so. What? Not biased at all? No. Well, that's why I live here. Otherwise, yeah. I'd go live that other place. <laughs> I mean, we have great climate and we've got the ocean and... Uh, people are friendly and, you know, so I like it here. I, there are more beautiful places, but anyhow, come visit. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm sad to let you go. Uh, so I have two questions. One is um, how do we get in touch with you? And do you have, I know you, have something you're offering uh the couple of people the first two that sign yeah. up so how do we get that and how do we connect with you cool thank you uh so i've just started sort of exploring instagram i haven't really done i've did, been on facebook a lot with the coaching business I haven't really done much on instagram but we're really going heavy on instagram with content we want to give a lot of value with like little tips and videos and mindset things. So Joel Dunn on Instagram, which is J-O-H-L-D-U-N-N, um, look up there. But uh, yeah, if you first two people that jump on the website, which is J-O-H-L-D-U-N-N.com, joeldunn.com, you can go and you can um, send me a message on there or on Instagram, first two people, and, and sort of mention this podcast, then we'll do a free 30-minute coaching call with them to explore where they're stuck or what they need help around at the moment do you have, is there a limited number of those well i will see how we go like i'll say at least two um and you know potentially could do more depending on the my diary at the okay. time but yeah two two to four probably yeah. okay and i didn't catch the address on that or what's your website oh, joeldunn.com so okay. j-o-h-l-d-u-n-n.com spelled a little different okay and a, a h is h in americans in case someone missed that <laughs> yep <laughs> i uh yeah oh like when you when we first logged on and you said i think how are you going uh, is that an expression yeah, how you go yeah. how you go 
uh, I remember when our mutual friend Steve Saparito said that, I was like, what are you asking me? What? What? <laughs> then he is like, oh, how are you? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to open the floor to whatever last thoughts or share you'd care to either wrapping it up or something you haven't shared. So what do you got? I think, um, I guess my advice to everyone is to uh, just to back yourself, number one. Like if you want to have the business of your dreams, there's no reason why you can't have it. The only thing that's stopping you is you at the moment. So you just mm. got to back yourself and push through it the, the fear barriers you have around certain things and always be curious, like always look for podcasts, books, coaches, Instagram accounts, something to give you motivation or help you move through and i'm always looking for different things to take me to areas i don't understand enough or that's give me motivation um so it's always being curious about what what else can i be doing or or what content can i be consuming to get me to where i want to go i love it i love it um i wanted to mention that that quote by stephen pressfield he wrote a book called the war of art have you read that? No, I haven't. Okay. I've heard, of the, I've heard I, of the Art of War. Right. I accidentally bought The Art of War the first time, <laughs> which is an ancient Chinese yeah. book. It's pretty hard to read that one, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, but The War of Art, uh, the core is about resistance. So oh, I of, uh... think people that like this conversation would find a lot of value uh Stephen Pressfield The War of Art and I I think you would as well Mr. Dole <laughs> it's right oh, up I'll, your alley it's cool really I'll huge. definitely check that out all right so everybody stay tuned for my wrap-up if that's possible with this incredible conversation with my guest and Joel I just want to thank you so much for saying yes this was um beyond my wildest dreams of a great conversation. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thanks for having me. I, yeah, I loved it. Really enjoyed it. I love having conversations with other like-minded um, business owners and photographers. So yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Hey everybody. Thanks again for listening to this and all the other shows and subscribing and telling your friends. So here's a quick wrap up. Um, we talked about mindset and Joel's, some of the bullet points that I have are, he said that life is the, wait, life is the preset. Maybe I didn't type that right. Anyway, a good mindset is having a picture of the ideal version of ourselves. <laughs> and he says there are lots of tools, which I agree to to help change our brain chemistry so that we can receive, so we can be more successful, so we can be that ideal version of ourselves. And I love that he suggested the first step is to become present to ourselves. When we're in fear, we're worrying about something, we're not in the present. So also we wanna be comfortable being uncomfortable. I liked that. Um, and he said, if we're afraid, it means we're pushing against our walls. And when we do that and we push through, then we have more space in ourselves. He suggests we take action on something that's bothering us, uh, looking at what our biggest fears are and pushing through that. He talked about the importance of trust. And I asked him, well, how do you get to that trust point? And he said things like, and I'm all about this, affirmations, meditation, um, letting yourself hit the wall, um, getting to that point where you're just sick and tired of what's going on. And instead of crumbling from that, letting that push you to do new things, getting support, having a coach, of course, uh, to me also going to groups and and studying, reading, conferences, all that good stuff. We talked about limiting money beliefs and um, 
so many cool things. The I am statements. I like that. So that's it for now. And I'm so excited. People have been sharing that this, this podcast, not this episode, this podcast offers something different that there may not be anyone with the amount of years of experience that I have and my perspective, even as a woman, um, I don't know what else, but that that there's something about this show that is different. And I so appreciate you listening and just letting friends know, even people who aren't photographers, but are entrepreneurs um, or have goals in mind that there's some good stuff here. And I've got some great guests like Joel Dunn. Uh, it's fabulous. <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Joel, if you're listening to this. Bye for now.